Hello everybody, welcome back. If you are new to this, uh, Total OS today is total technology for beginners because we all start somewhere. So if you are new to the world of Linux and need a starting point, uh, well that's what I'm here for. Before we take a look at the brand new Gigastrand OS operating system, if you haven't already, please vote for the best Linux desktop environment. There are approximately three days left to vote on this poll. Hopefully polls like this you know, may help newbies get involved with Linux if they are curious about it, just basically as a starting point. I've also uh, put a new form here at the bottom if you have bought a new piece of technology, computer, cell phone, whatever the case may be, and would like to share your thoughts with us, good or bad, please do. I got the first topic started, do you like Windows 8? It's that simple, of course, assuming you bought a Windows 8 machine. Gigastrand OS. Uh, I was browsing the web today, caught this quite by accident. This is supposedly designed for Windows users, Linux newbies, beginners, dummies, and all that good stuff who want to get started with a what may appear to be a very user-friendly, gigas or very friendly Linux-based operating system. I haven't tested this. I have not tested this yet. We, we will be taking a look at this in a virtual box. But this is the website here, uh, gigastrandos.com. I will have all the links below in the show notes. But let's take a quick look at this. This is version 1.0. It says here, uh, here, Gigastrand OS makes your PC better. Here's how runs more efficiently, it's more secure, uh, it is better supported, okay I will take your word for it, it is more compatible and it's easy and, uh, and it's easy is in big big bold letters and we all like easy right? There's some screenshots here if we go to uh, let's see about it says here the elevator pitch uh, well first of all it says creating an operating system for everyone cool uh, the elevator pitch, millions of PC users and businesses are stuck with an operating system that is inefficient, insecure, incompatible, and under-supported. Of course, the question is which one, right? Uh, Gigastrand OS is, OS is a self-supporting PC operating system designed with superior cross-platform compatibility, safer, less expensive. It has more information here. Uh, the Gigastrand operating system will be easy to use, be purpose-built to aid users in the transition to Linux, uh, come preloaded with all the essential software. It says it has built-in Microsoft compat compatibility. Cool. All right, this is version 1.0. Now there is more information here. I, I won't read all of this. Uh, briefly here, FAQs, uh, really another Linux distribution Why? And quite frankly, that was my question. Uh, we at Gigastrand have asked ourselves this question many times and if, it, and if it came down to simply making another distribution we wouldn't do it. Fair enough. Uh, Gigastrand has a vision of a purpose-built operating system <coughs> excuse me, uh, that appeals to a wide variety of people and aids Windows and Mac users in the transition to Linux. Awesome. Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and others have done a beautiful job, a beautiful job that is, have done a beautiful job of creating an OS that appeals to most of what Gigastrand sets out to do, but not everything, okay? The areas that we feel Linux Mint does not cover are areas for improvement and areas that fit well into the Gigastrand model. Wow. So apparently, they have created something that is, I guess, better than Linux Mint. That's that's a pretty lofty goal. I have no idea if it is. We will be taking a look at this together. So again, gigastrandos.com. There is a uh, transition guide here for beginners. Make sure you take a look at this to get you started. All right, enough talking. Let's take a look at Gigastrand OS. All right, I will not be installing this. We will take a look at the installer at the end. It's 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 probably going to be a very basic, you know, user-friendly installer, uh, more than likely. I'm just going to run this in scale mode. So this is the uh, desktop, default desktop in scale mode. Uh, this is running KDE. Uh, let's see, right-click, and you have the usual KDE functions here. If you have seen Kubuntu or something like that, this may be familiar. Uh, to you. Uh, one of the famous things that uh, KD is famous for is of course adding widgets, uh, plasmoids, I think uh, Windows uh, they were called desktop gadgets uh, and as an example if I click the uh, there's a couple icons here 
if I click this uh, add widgets and you can add something to your desktop we'll just add the analog clock here and you can move this and change the size as you see here I'll just leave it small let me go ahead and widen this up here a little bit all right and I'm running this with Ubuntu Unity as the host, which is my uh, desktop, default desktop of choice, at least on this machine. Okay, well, we have the usual KDE panel here at the bottom, the widgets, the time, updates, internet, volume, clipper, device is plugged in, and the... Um, Let's see here. Yeah, device plugged in optical disk. All right, let's go ahead and get out of this. Of course, right clicking here, you can you have panel options such as moving the panel from the bottom to the top and stuff like that. All right, what is this here? Gigastrand support, okay. This is, what is this, Team Viewer, okay, you need to register ID, password, which we won't do that, okay. This is non-commercial use, all right, cool. Thunderbird, I believe that's Thunderbird, yep, that's what I use, very easy to use in both Windows and Linux for that matter. Okay, and this is actually booting up pretty fast in a virtual machine, nice job in terms of speed. Of course, Firefox appears to be installed by default nice all right your shortcuts here computer nice preview panes gigastrandos.com install we'll take a look at that last shouldn't be that big of a deal gigastrand support okay click the start button as a windows user would crossover this is probably to install pieces of windows software that may work in this hopefully it will let's see debian applications crossover games lots of stuff installed it appears development web development web authoring system education science desktop planetarium cool all right going down the list here <clears throat> excuse me arcade board games card games games for kids sweet logic and tactics graphics the gimp is installed very nice Internet, let's see, Firefox, uh, Thunderbird, we looked at, uh, BitTorrent Client, KTorrent. This is based on KDE, so you will see a lot of Ks. Uh, Google Chrome is installed, nice. And Skype, very good. Multimedia, let's see, Audacity is very good. And VLC is installed, very nice. That should be your default player, really, for both Linux and Windows. Office, uh, Open Office, is, is that still uh, being developed? I think LibreOffice is the one that's probably most popular now. I'm just guessing. Anyway, settings. Let's go to the uh, system settings, which would be control panel if you are running Windows. All right, this is updates. I will not be installing any updates. Let's get out of this. Oh, look and feel. Okay, advanced, personal, system. Network, computer administration, let's see, appearance, style, colors. Okay, I, I don't think a Windows user will have problems navigating to this. All righty, let's see, where were we? System, utilities, find files and folders, help, favorites, run command, and leave. All right right-clicking has the usual uh, let's see gigastrand support alright that takes us back to the team viewer um, how much RAM is this using let me uh, go here real quick if I can find that uh, system This is the info center here. Oops, don't want that. Get out of that there. Uh, let's see.
system monitor. There we go. Wow, 263 megabytes of RAM. Not bad at all. Hmm. This one is probably going to run zippy if you install it, guys. So, so far, it looks good. All right, well, let's take a quick look at the installer. And um, there's the clock there. You can't know if you can see it there. Anyway, take a look at the installer, and then we'll wrap this up. Let's see. The, ooh, the action you requested needs root privileges. I don't recall this in Ubuntu and Linux and Linux Mint. Why is this asking me for a password? This is not what I would perceive to be user friendly or Windows newbie friendly. Uh, well, I did, I did not look at the documentation, but let's see if I can figure it out. Root? I guess not. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Password? Okay. Um, hmm. um, zero, 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 zero. All right, this is starting to get annoying. Um, I can probably install this through the terminal, but that's not really designed for newbies. Let's try um, one, two, three, four, Five. Well, I'm guessing it's going to be. Let's try that. Okay. All right. It looks like it's one, two, three, four. Uh, this is an advanced installer. Please use with caution. Do you want to? Oh, this is something a Windows user wants to see. Okay. Fine. Yes. We need to prepare a swap and and install partition now. Gparted, uh -oh. you will need, you must create one install and one swap. I mean, this, I know what this is, but a newbie is not going to care. At least that's how I see it. But let's keep on going. Uh boy, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, All right, I'm going to stop this here. This last part, I've liked, I've really liked what I've seen so far. It looks really nice. It looks like it may run fast. The website seems to be helpful, but this is misleading. This apparently does not have an automatic installer. Uh, I'm not going to say it's difficult for a newbie to figure it out, but Ubuntu and Linux Mint, and this appears to strive for a higher quality uh, content, shall I say, the Linux Mint. Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Zorn, those top three Linux OS's that I recommend for beginners has an automatic installer. So as far as this operating system goes, especially with all the really nice information on the website, I'm going to have to uh, classify this as a fail at least with the install. They're very disappointing uh, because as I stated Ubuntu and Linux Mint you just click and go in terms of the installation. So I'm just going to quit here. At least a Windows user can figure that out, right? This appears to be a very fine and polished operating system. I'm not going to go through the installation process because once again if this is designed for as it stated an easy transition for Windows and Mac users to this, a, a new user is probably going to take a look at the install and say, you know what, I'm not going to go through that. Linux sucks, which would be a completely unfair and, and untrue statement. And when I do reviews like this, newbies need to know what the expectations are so they can make a fair assessment on their own based on the information given to them. And if they're just going to go out and try this and install it and see, if, well, you know, well, first of all, it needs a password. It should be completely unnecessary. They're going to get ticked, probably. Let's say they figure out the password by watching this. Now the install process. They're going to say this is no good, as I stated. And that would be, of course, completely unfair and untrue. But you can certainly under understand the reasoning of a beginner. So as far as this goes, I will end the review as it is 
to the developers of this I really like it but you need to change the installer it is completely unnecessary or misleading to say this is an easy operating system for beginners uh, which may very well be once they figure out the installation now it's probably in the documentation but once again with Ubuntu and Linux Mint you just click and go you don't have to look at the documentation all right well that's my look at the Gika Strand OS if you guys have any other uh, observations so if you have installed this uh, and the installation and the installation process went smooth please let me know and I'll be happy to share it with the other newbies out there that's it for this thank you so much for watching and listening and as always I will catch all of you sometime in the future